In the early hours of this morning, a group of heavily armed gunmen broke into the home of the president of Haiti, Jovenel Moise, in the suburbs of the capital Port-au-Prince, and shot him dead. It was a stunning and brutal assassination which left his wife, the First Lady, in hospital and has left that island nation in political chaos today. The 53-year-old Moise, who came into office in 2017, was murdered by assassins who spoke Spanish and pretended to be members of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, according to the Haitian government. Earlier, Haiti's ambassador to the U.S. called for international help to find these attackers. What we can do now, it's... Uh requests of the international partners to help us in identifying those killers uh, to be part of this international manhunt and investigation because we need to identify those killers. The assassination is only set to deepen the political crisis that Haiti's been mired in for months. In February, the UN Security Council meeting, President Moise blamed powerful oligarchs for orchestrating seven attempts to overthrow Haiti's democratic system. But Moise himself had been ruling by decree for over a year now after dissolving the country's parliament. And mass protests had been ongoing since he refused to leave office when his term technically ended in February. The Biden administration controversially supported him staying in office. Today's news only makes matters worse in a country that's not only facing political uncertainty, but has been hard hit by the pandemic as well. Already the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere, Haiti is also the only country in it that still hasn't distributed any COVID-19 vaccines. It's easy to dismiss the nation of more than 11 million people as a mess. But it's important to know how much the U.S. has been intimately linked with the social, political and economic crises that Haiti has faced. In 1915, under Woodrow Wilson, 330 U.S. Marines arrived in Port-au-Prince, beginning an almost two decades long occupation to control Haiti's political and financial interests. The occupation ended in 1934, but the U.S. retained financial control until 1947. Then, in the 1990s, Raul Cedras, a military commander trained at the controversial U.S. School of the Americas, led a deadly coup that deposed then-President Jean Bertrand Aristide. After mass protests from Haitians in America, after mass protests, uh, Bill Clinton reinstated the democratically elected president, and the U.N. approved a U.S.-led military intervention to remove Cedras. The message of the United States to the Haitian dictators is clear. Your time is up. Leave now or we will force you from power. The military regime stepped down before an intervention took place, but these events speak to the extent of U.S. involvement in that Caribbean nation. Earlier, Joe Biden condemned today's assassination and said the U.S. was prepared to help. So what do Haitians think the U.S. should do now, if anything? And how is President Moise's assassination affecting that country. Joining me now to discuss this is Widlaw Merencourt, a Haitian journalist and editor-in-chief of the Port-au-Prince-based Aibo Post paper. Uh, Widlaw, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. Uh, you're on the ground in Haiti right now, in the capital. What's it been like today? How is the country dealing with this? I mean, these are extraordinary circumstances. I mean, uh, Haiti is in a state of confusion right now because, um, as you stated uh, this morning, the president was killed. Um, there is a manhunt uh, being conducted all over the country. The government declared a, stage, a state of siege to help with this manhunt. We don't know who did what happened. Uh, we don't even know who is conducting the government because two days before this assassination, the prime minister was replaced. Uh, um, Claude Joseph, who is actually acting as the prime minister, he was replaced by Ariel Henry. And uh, Ariel Henry just spoke on the media saying that uh, he is the prime minister um, and he is trying to build the government. But the international community, including uh, the U.S., is talking and speaking directly to Claude Joseph. Uh, but uh, if you talk to constitutional lawyers, if you talk to all sorts of people, including the opposition in Haiti, uh, they will tell you that uh, Claude Joseph do not have any authority, legal or moral whatsoever, to uh, speak on behalf of the Haitian government because he resigned uh, two days before and uh, there is a new prime minister. office in 2017 he quickly became 
unpopular with different groups of people. There were corruption allegations against him for one thing. He claimed oligarchs in Haiti were opposed to him. Why did he become so unpopular so quickly? I mean, uh, President Jovenel Moïse is a very controversial figure. Several reports, including from, um, uh, from the government, uh, named uh, himself and his company uh, in the embezzlement of billions of dollars in a fund called Petro Caribe. Um, and since these reports uh, came out, uh, he was contested in the street by several, um, you know, politicians and uh, civil society organizations. Uh, at the same time, this president is is someone who sh tried to change the constitution in an illegal manner. The 1987 constitution forbids referendum. He was trying to change the constitution via referendum, and uh, human rights organizations are saying are denouncing. Uh, provision inside this constitution that would give him immunity so he could not be prosecuted for you know uh, money crimes that he uh, allegedly committed um, in the past years as a businessman and, and including allegations of uh, embezzlement of money while he is president. He uh, last year for instance he um, started um, a secret service uh, the Secret Service was denounced by the U.S. because it gives, uh, it it holds broad power, um, and this Secret Service came at the same time while the president uh, put out a decree because you know the president was governing via decree since 2020 because he did not hold elections on time, so he was the only one in charge of the country, actually. He was the only one uh, holding the executive yeah. branch and the legislative branch at the same time. So let me ask you this. What do you think the U.S. should do? Should the U.S. do anything? Because this country has a long and pretty checkered history when it comes to its relationship with Haiti. And President Biden, of all people, in 1994, in an interview with Charlie Rose on PBS, he said this. Have a listen. If Haiti, a god-awful thing to say, if Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole but lot. Uh, today, though, Biden, who supported Moise when he said he was going to carry out his term until 2022, he's saying the U.S. is ready to help Haiti in any way the country wants. Do Haitians want U.S. help? Do they want help from Joe Biden? I mean, maybe that's a good question, because the U.S. did two things here uh, since the president was assassinated. First thing, the U.S. approved and was in direct uh, uh, talk to Claude uh, Joseph as the prime minister but if you talk to several people in haiti including those who oppose the president including including those who were in the street uh, protesting against his administration they are telling you that they don't recognize claude joseph as the prime minister because he he resigned two days back second thing is the u.s uh, stated again which is which was the the, the policy of the u.s uh, uh, in haiti for a couple of years that we should have election in Haiti right now. But I had a discussion right before I talked to you with two high profile um, human rights organization lawyers, uh, and they are telling me that, first of all, we can't have an election in this country. Seven, ye seven days uh, before the assassination, uh, gang leaders uh, conducted a massacre. 20 people were killed, including uh, a high profile opponent of the president and a journalist. Um, and uh, since June, you had gangs conducting massacres in impoverished uh, areas in the country. And uh, you have 16 people, 16,000 people, 16,000, who flee their homes seeking shelters because, because of the gang violence. So uh, on top of all these things, you have the coronavirus uh, crisis on the background, you have the con the constitutional crisis, and uh, for the U.S. to call for election in this context, uh, in what people are telling me, um, is um, practically insane. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.